Today's episode is brought to you by Blevception. Drop the beat! Welcome to High Noon Podcast, the competitive Overwatch podcast. I am your host, The Blevins, and with me, as always, is Seth Blow. What's up, buddy? Not too much. How's it going? It's going well. And we are back, folks, and ready for action. Took took a nice little Valentine's Day break for ourselves last week, uh, but we are back and and ready to go. Yeah, I mean, you make that sound like there's people out there that that love us and wanted to celebrate Valentine's Day with us, but really, there was just no Overwatch. Um, that is, that is, <laughs> and also, it wasn't even Valentine's Day. So, <laughs> no, not not the day of. It was in that that uh, general time frame. But I mean, we couldn't we like couldn't even frame an episode around the lack of of competitive scene that had occurred sure. uh, the week prior. So, uh, our apologies for missing the week. Uh, we always kind of plan to do things by seasons and that may, that idea may come back once the league gets going, but uh, yeah. we've pretty much thrown it to the wayside by now. So, you know, in, in exchange for no extended breaks, uh, it might happen again. Hopefully not though. Hopefully there's just more than enough. Well, per- just per- looking, per- just looking at the upcoming schedule for the next, like at least few weeks, if not months, we've got uh, some nice, some nice tournaments coming up and we will be talking about those in just a little bit, but so uh let's let's talk a little bit what what did what did we do last week did you do any anything fun death you know in the last week no not really um i've got a a, one of my best friends growing up is is having a lot of medical problems so i've been trying to help him and had to take him to the hospital this week and i've been trying to hang out with him a bunch since Mm -hmm. you know he's got a lot of stuff going on Mm -hmm. otherwise though just continuing to practice limitedly with the team um, one of our guys, our shot caller, had a, a long weekend this week, uh, yes. given the holiday. So we've been kind of off for a little while, but I've been hitting ranked really hard. And I'm hoping, not I'm not hopeful, but I'm, I'm <laughs> holding out some hope mm-hmm. that I can manage to, to get into Diamond after we're done recording tonight. Um, finally stopped plummeting with every new tryout. Um, you know, go earn five losses real fast with a, every new team you try out with. It did a lot of damage to my rating. I'm not even back up to my season high, which was just outside of diamond. And, um, but I'm, I'm almost 2,900. So I need a, nice. uh, need a solid win streak tonight. And if I see any, any consecutive losses, it'll probably, um, probably just do me in, but we'll see. Cause there's going to be a lot of people out there that just don't care. Today true because they true. can't go from diamond to master so what does it matter and true hopefully they're on the other team and not right the right <laughs> yeah using that logic they're also going to be on your team but you can always yes. just roll the dice right and i but i can grab a buddy or two and and reduce the odds of that some true. um so yeah, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Hopefully next week I've got good news, but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't hold your breath for it, folks. Solus, I think actually hit master this season. Nice. Like from I think he started in plat or maybe high gold. Like he started at basically the same spot that I did. And I think he hit master. He def 100% hit diamond. I I think he said he hit master. I don't know. Um yeah, I did what? not. I I hit I hit my <laughs> plat though. I did hit my That's- plat. Uh, are you, your rating still in there? Or do you drop down at all? Uh, I think I'm just in plat. My my high I think was 26 and change. I think. Gotcha. I think I'm in the 25s now. Yeah, one of the guys on our team actually um, is master and was making a grandmaster push at the end on his main account, and then. Um, since that can't queue with with some of our lower end guys, mm. um, he does have a, an alt which mm-hmm. uh, actually almost got to master as well. That <laughs> um, seems so, to be yeah. how it works, right? Yeah, I mean he he uh, he's just a really talented. It's not even like 
it's a Smurf account, which is usually what it is. I mean, it was mm -hmm. back in the day, but I mean, there's only like a 200 rating point difference between them. It's just <laughs> yeah, ones like on one side of the it. master, the master yeah. uh, ledge and, and the other ones on the other side. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's been it's been really um, fun, but we're actually going to end up having to replace him because he got picked up by a, um, I mean a lesser uh, team, but still uh, you know like masters, grandmasters guys and stuff like that. So gotcha. Yeah, but been having a lot of fun with those guys, and uh, we need to get more practice in because we don't we don't practice enough, but we are successful when we do. Yeah. And um, our our synergy and our our communications, all those things are are rapidly getting way better. That's and, awesome. Uh, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully we can expand our practice hours and replace him without a hitch and and uh, hit the ground running again after the little holiday break. Nice. I've played almost no Overwatch lately. I've noticed. I've yeah. just I don't know. I I like something like I just needed to take a break. I guess I don't know. Uh, I just haven't had the itch. I know I'm going to get definitely when the se when the new season starts, I'll I'll get the itch again, a hundred percent. But I might get it before. I don't know. Probably the next. Say, do yourself a favor and and knock the rust off before you get started on the new season. Yeah. That's Otherwise, true. You'll, you'll have a bit of a, a shock because it, it's we basically true. didn't play on this meta at all. That is true. And you're going to be like two metas behind. So. Well, I mean, it does it really matter if you're one meta behind or if you're two metas behind? Like, isn't it the same thing? It's not. It's just not what you were doing. Um, no, because it, it's it was a little gradual. But I, I want to. We're going to talk a little bit more about what the meta is doing a little later on, so we can kind of take this. Well, what I will say about metas and getting back into the swing of things is that I've been playing a lot of Clash Royale, <laughs> <laughs> like a lot. Um, I definitely hit my, which I didn't actually know was possible. I hit my like max amount of gold you can gain in a day from playing game, from winning games. I definitely didn't know that was. Yeah, possible. I did not either. Uh, but on Saturday, I just like kept playing. It's it's been like a cycle every weekend. I'll be at like three k to thirty one hundred like at the end of the week. And then over the weekend, I'll play, I'll drop to like 2,700 or something, like ridiculously <laughs> low. And then I'll just keep playing until I get back up to 3K. And then I start Monday at 3K all over again. It's like a, an awful, <laughs> awful cycle. <laughs> yeah, I only win when I like sit down and play for some extended periods of time. Like that's the only time I do any climbing. Um, but I, I mean, I got level two graveyard now, so I'm all set. Ooh, graveyard, nice. I got level two log. Which is pretty. That's pretty. Powerful. That is a pretty good one. Yeah, level I'm two log and level, level two, two minor. Those might actually be the two best to get level two. <laughs> it's pretty. They're pretty good ones. Yeah, I got level two lumberjack as well. I don't even own lumberjack yet. He's the only card I don't own yet. Uh, rip. I don't think he's that good either. But again, this still isn't the Clash Royale podcast that I want it to be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I've also I've actually also been playing a lot of other mobile games too. I started playing Vain Glory, which is actually surprisingly. Um, quite nice. Well, it's actually not that surprising. It's a it's a pretty uh, it, it's it's put they've put a lot of polish into the game. But for a mobile game that is a MOBA, it's actually pretty. It's pretty good. Yeah, I personally hated it, but I, I think that had more to do with my my fat fingers than. Were you playing uh, it on the phone or on a on like a tablet? Yeah, I don't own a tablet. Okay, I don't need a there's couch your computer. problem. Right there. I don't own a couch. Yeah, that's uh, that I found. Like, I have a, um, I have a, like a, a good, like really good, um, like processor phone. I have the Pixel XL, but it's literally not big enough. Like, I can play it, and it's passable, but it's a thousand times better on my lower quality in terms of processing speed iPad because it's bigger. Right. Um, significantly changes like the feel for the game. Gotcha. Um, but let's move right along to what did you guys do last week? Um, got a couple of things uh, I found on Reddit and some posts. Um, one, there's actually this really uh, cool post that I know Deathblow will absolutely love because he loves Pokemon so much. Um, it's basically a... <laughs> uh, I don't mind Pokemon. What's that? Oh, no, it's it's not you. It's it's Hexagrams that hates Pokemon. Yes. I yes, forgot. Yes. Hexagrams hates Pokemon. Um but it's basically someone like went through and like made Pokemon versions of all the Overwatch characters. But it's not like 
like bef- like there was something that was like that before, but it was just like Soldier seventy six as a Blastoise or uh, you know Reinhardt as a Machamp or something like that. No, this is different. This is like okay, the first one it's um like it's a tracer, but it's a bird, kind of like kind of like Pidgey, but it's called like Hasty, and it's got like a description, and then it evolves into another thing that's also like a variant of tracer, and then it evolves into a third thing. Like it's actually like pretty like it's definitely meant to be like tongue-in-cheek kind of like funny uh but it's actually like there's there's some some work that was put into it so uh definitely check that out the link will be in uh the show notes um and the other thing uh that is actually going to be even though it wasn't him that posted it it was actually the official overwatch uh twitter but it still will count as Overwatch Today Meme of the Week. Yes, the Overwatch Today Meme of the Week, even though it wasn't Overwatch Today, it was actually from the Overwatch official Twitter. It is a picture of an Anna skin with white hair looking at another Anna, like in the darkness, like that like Darth Kermit meme, basically. And it says, me, boost the Reinhardt. Also me, Busta Lucio. Yeah, I actually had a comp game. I don't know if it was last night or the night before where I played Lucio and I got nano boosted. Not once, not twice, three times. Uh, (laughs) Maybe they wanted to boost you, man. And we won and it was glorious. (laughs) I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, It was pretty phenomenal. And he wants to claim they were all an accident. And after the first one, I don't buy it because literally one of the times (laughs) I was wall riding like 400 feet up in the air. So you can't tell me, I don't even care if there was a Farah in the sky. You can't tell me that that was on purpose because I'm against the wall. You just look at the other guy. Uh, (laughs) It was glorious, though, and it was a lot of fun, and I didn't have to be tilted because we did get the win. So. Like, how sweet would it be if you got boostioed and you flew up there and, like, wall rode up there and then booped a Farah down to the ground? Like, you're above the Farah and you boop her down. How sweet would that I've be? I've actually seen it without the... Um, without the nano boost, yeah. Oh, that's pretty sweet, it's, it's pretty ridiculous, yeah. Like, I need to do more wall riding, um with Lucio. Like I need to just go yeah. into like custom games and not do anything but wall ride and find out where I can get because it's like the only part of my Lucio game that and it's just so boring. I don't like doing that custom game, not really playing stuff. Well, one thing a video I actually did see that I didn't put in the show notes was with the new custom game settings. Uh I think in PTR, I don't think they're live yet. Or maybe they are. You can like change um the speed that characters move at or that heroes move at and like the, the cooldowns and stuff, you can change more things and like a max speed Lucio can just like wall right anywhere. You, you're, you're basically, ha- you basically have flight. Uh, right. I like saw someone like just wall riding across the entire map of Hanamura uh, and just like going from like the top of building to like, just like flying around like you could with Pharah, just like, just like wall riding across <laughs> everything. It's like, it was pretty hilarious. I'm like, I actually wish Lucio could do this at normal speed. It would be sweet. Um, yeah, I mean, he needs to have some downside, though, I guess. Well, even though he still doesn't have a downside. He, yeah, he he absolutely doesn't have a downside, but he's not, like, overtly... He's not overtly <laughs> powerful. He actually is, but it's not... It, like, his power level is not very obvious at, like, at first glance. He yeah. He actually is that powerful, though, but... Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I I do wish that Lucio could fly. And also, um, one last note is that Lucio's now in Heroes of the Storm, which is pretty sweet. Um, I saw that. I will never play him in Heroes of the Storm. Why not? I I do think it's cool. Because I get enough of them when I'm playing Overwatch. Oh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) What? (laughs) I thought it's like you're not like, I know you're not like opposed to playing support. Oh, okay. You just just don't want to literally play the same exact character. (laughs) Right, right. They've been too too good. Like, they've been ported over too well so yeah. far in every hero I've seen where it feels like you're playing the character. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know that I could handle that. <laughs> Fair enough. But let's move right along so that we can get death into diamond this season with... It's Tournament Talk. 
Yes, so let's do a little bit of tournament talk. So we're going to start with... Um, uh, we're going to start with a couple of um, upcoming tournaments. This one, I think, is actually one of the most exciting uh, for us. Uh, it's an NA tournament. It's called the Overwatch Carbon Series. Um, it is going to be featuring Complexity, Team Liquid, Hammers Esports, Renegades, Luminosity, and Immortals. So invitational tournament, small, small form, um, but a really, like, stacked um in terms of teams left in na <laughs> uh lineup probably mm, with with maybe like one or two exceptions probably about as stacked as you can make it right now um maybe three. yeah before this weekend i don't think i would have made any changes now there's there's one i might yeah. want to make um but it's it's really nitpicky but that actually curiously enough looking at the schedule for that uh is slated to start today so I don't know if I have something to watch while I'm playing First ranked later match or not. Is Immortals versus Complexity, which starts in 45 minutes. Gotcha. So definitely, if you're listening in podcast land, that is already happening. So they are in the middle of the group stages. That'll have your favorite casters, Hex ZP, uh, a lot of very familiar faces there as well. Those six teams will be doing double round robin for the group stages. Mm -hmm. uh, they will play Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday next week, I believe, is the uh, plan for that. So those will be best of three, and then the playoffs will be March 25th and March 26th, uh, where it'll be down to the top four, a single limb best of five. Oh, no, they're, so. they're playing, they're going to be playing this for uh, over a month. Yeah. The, yeah, it'll so be, it's, it's more than just this week and next week. It's, I think, the two weeks after that as well, and then the playoffs. Yeah, I th it sounds to me like what they're going to do is a light Break group stage. Between. Like, you're going to see, right, like, we're going to see, uh, let's see, so there's got to be five matches every two, week. Two, so four, six, eight, ten, so it's like... Two matches each night, three nights a week. For, I, I don't even know exactly. Um, well, it says that the group stage is between February 20th and March 22nd, so that's the next four weeks. Well, regardless. Uh, and I only see two on the schedule tonight, so there will be Immortals, Complexity, LG, Renegades, and then the next day is Liquid and Hammers, um, LG and Immortals. So, yeah, it's going to be two matches a day until the group stages yeah. uh, wind down, and they'll be taking Thursday and Friday off. So uh, it'll be great. I, I kind of really like the format, especially when it's mm -hmm. playing in a time I can watch it. It's yeah. going to be during the downtime. Like everything about this so far is is shaping up to be uh, to be a plus. So I'm very excited to uh, to see this get started here pretty soon. Yeah, and they haven't announced a prize pool yet, but I'm imagining um, it's probably going to be pretty decent if like these caliber teams are going to be playing like it. Seems like it would be pretty good. I think that this is actually taking place in Colorado, um, at least based on the fact that like the Rocky Mountains are in the picture and Hexagrams was tweeting about being in Colorado this week. So I'm assuming yeah, that's like actually he, where it is. This month, like he basically yeah. moved out there for a month. Yeah, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so it's yeah, it does appear to be on land. I don't know 100% that the group stages will be, but I, I think so. I just don't know for sure. Well, I don't know because I know uh, one of the other – tournaments that we're gonna talk about i think hammers is in so i don't know maybe i, I don't know um it, once we yeah, get more we, details we'll let you know we might as well just talk about it we don't have a confirmed date but the other yeah. event that's coming up almost guaranteed this week will be the alienware monthly melee that will be mm -hmm. phase clan Rogue, Immortals, Hammers, Luminosity, Complexity, Renegades, and Rise Nation. So that is an online tournament. So even if they are on site, well, that's true. Uh, as long as it doesn't take place Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, they will still be able to uh, attend the event and participate in it, no problem. So I'm guessing that's what's going on since there's plenty of overlap um, mm -hmm. going on there. But nonetheless, we will have that event coming up soon. And since it's not on the same day, I will still hold out hope that uh, Hex and ZP will be together to do the casting of that. Hopefully. Uh, they've been bringing in uh, <laughs> Uber and JCap as well. Yep. So 
uh, other great voices that we we always love to hear commentating the matches and, and handling the overtalk in between. Um, so finally, after such a, a downtime, everything's happening at once, and I couldn't just like it me. always does. <laughs> Absolutely, it's yeah. always feast they, or famine in Overwatch esports. It works for me because I'm I binge watch every TV show. Like I wait for eight episodes, <laughs> or I'll wait for two seasons of something I haven't yep. started watching to yep. to be able to binge it. Um, so it's perfect for me. I hope it works out for everybody else too. Yeah, and uh, the last thing about this uh, Carbon series is actually Gosu Gamers did a nice little uh, meet the teams of the Carbon series uh, post. I will post a link in the show notes. Uh, take a look at it. Um, if you guys don't check out Gosu Gamers, um, you know during the week I, I use it a lot for tournament results, uh, but they also post a lot of uh, decent uh, articles and whatnot as well, and they did a nice little write up on the team. So take a look at that as well. Um, so in terms of um, oh, and then there's one other uh, tournament series that we don't really cover too much, but I thought would be uh, interesting to uh, note is that the uh, the Rivalcade uh, weeklies. Um, for both NA and EU um, are going to be coming back on Tuesdays. Um, so if you didn't have enough Overwatch on Tuesday, <laughs> you now also have both the NA and EU are both going to be played on the same day, as well as the Carbon Esports. So uh, I guess Tuesday's the new day for Overwatch right now. <laughs> There's just so much going on on Tuesdays. But um yeah, so definitely take a look at that as well. Um, so in terms of actual Overwatch that was played uh, this weekend, um, we saw a little bit more of the OGN Apex tournament, which we've been so in love with. The times are so great, and they play so much. Um, JK, I think the Carbon series in the – like the – in its second week will have played more matches than the entire OGN in its history. Um, basically yeah. the two teams have three matches. Yeah, played. Two like, teams, four teams out of 12 have played three matches um, in like 800,000 years that we've been waiting. <laughs> um, but notably envious is two and oh. um, we've got MVP infinity uh oh nope sorry that's oh three not three oh jk i was like we've never heard this team they came out of nowhere to still not win a game JK. You know where, yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> lunatic high is also uh two and oh uh cloud nine our boys cloud nine one and one um africa freaks blue for um finalist of the last is one and one um fanatic one and one um and misfits is also one and one so the two, I think, the the two teams that most would consider the top, Lunatic High and Envious, holding that undefeated record. Um, though, it, can you really call it undefeated if it's two and zero? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, they they haven't suffered a loss, but there's plenty of uh, play still to to happen here. So we'll have to wait yeah. and see exactly how this all I, plays out. I do think uh, that this is the last, like, three is the last number of matches they're going to be playing for the group stages and then it cuts to oh that'll be good because the, the playoffs should be over a, a much shorter period of time at least i'd like yeah. to think so and um, especially if they do the 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 team draft like they did last time where like the top seeded teams get to pick their opponents right which would right. be kind of cool if the, we could you know get some rivalry built in there but yeah i'm really just looking for this tournament to end um, or at least move to, like, I want the group stages to end. I am done with the group stages. Like, I could understand if there was, this was the only tournament playing and there was nothing else to watch. It'd be like, okay, well, you know, I don't want to just see the one, like, snapshot tournament where it's a big tournament on a weekend, like most Magic tournaments are. Uh, you know, I want to see kind of like a league. Like, let's see the group stages progress. I want to, I want stuff to consume. There's plenty to consume. There's literally three tournaments being played on Tuesday. <laughs> we don't need 800,000 year long group stages in Korea, okay? We can just we can we can deal without it. Just just stop. I mean, I wouldn't mind if it didn't split the region, um, yeah. split the the talent in the and, regions a little bit. And just bit, take but... every good team out. Like who like and... And I don't mind two matches a day. Obviously, that's what Carbon Masters is going to be doing. Mm -hmm. And but they're going to be 
playing them out much faster. It seems like we'll have to wait and see though. Maybe it, maybe it turns out that I, I do hate two, <laughs> two matches. <laughs> today. We'll, we'll know very soon because in 12 hours there'll be two matches have been played and, and they'll be done. True. Um, so yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. But uh, for the time being, you know, every one of the EU and a teams that have gone over there are still very much so in the running. We've got Misfits, Fnatic, uh, kind of sitting on the outside looking in at, at ranked third in their group. Um, Misfits seems to have the, the longer road ahead of them as there's um, two two-win teams in front of them already. And the other ones are just kind of like missing out on tie breaks. Mm-hmm. Um rather than a straight up record discrepancy. Yep. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how everything plays out, but I, I definitely am going to be keeping an eye open for those finals. And um, it's just going to add to the the slew of, of competitive overwatch that we'll be getting over the next couple of weeks here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, it, it, it brings up the bigger question of like, what is going to happen to these organizations? Like maybe not OGN because OGN's established. OGN has a lot of stuff, but like what's going to happen to the rival Cades? What's going to happen to the Alienware monthly melees? What's going to happen to all these like one-off tournaments, the NGE winter premiere, uh, which obviously isn't going to be winter premiere forever, but what are going to happen to all those organizations when Overwatch League comes out? Is it going to be better or worse for those like organizations? Well, we'll have to wait and see, really. I, it, there's a very real chance in my mind it doesn't impact it at all because yeah. there'll be more organized teams. Like, I think the number of, of top-tier teams will, will increase as a result of the league. Good point. Um, given, given the organization, you'll you'll still have teams of players that, that didn't want to leave Europe and move uh-huh. to the United States mm-hmm. to form. You'll still have your, your Asian region. And I really think the mass uh exodus and and the just sprinting away from europe of of all these teams and players is because they know that there's not going to be any european teams when the league launches that those will have to be added in expansion Mm -hmm. um so the talent's trying to get over here and the organizations are trying to get over here um but you know know, i was watching linkser stream and he's like man i really wish i could move to the united states i I really want to i wish i could do this clearly they can't and it doesn't look like dignitas and and maybe the the players involved in dignitas are going to be a part of the league which is a shame Um, which is really weird because they're literally owned by the 76ers right right i mean it could just be it might might not be the whole team either it could just be players i mean we don't know uh what the organization plans to do they could keep a european team keep those guys under contract and just pick up an overwatch league team and then you know just just have two um yeah it's that, definitely that something point. we've seen in the past, and yeah. So I don't, I don't remember exactly where I was going with this when I started <laughs> this conversation. But, um, I, I didn't really have any plan for it. It's just a thought I had. It's like, you know, we, we're seeing a lot of these, you know, not not small tournaments. You know, these like 50k, 100k tournaments and in, in leagues, or I, I guess you would call it like tournament series that go across multiple weeks. You know, what happens to NGE or uh, uh, NGE? Um, you know, uh, do, do they survive or do they uh, do they die or do they flourish because of Overwatch League? I'm very I'm very curious. And you know that obviously we don't know anything until we we hear something about Overwatch League, uh, which we haven't obviously. Um, but you know, I, I guess the, it leaves like those smaller those lower tier tournaments um, to be like the B League, the or that like like the NBA D League, the developmental league, where it's like okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, either players get sent down there, like a farm system. We've talked somewhat about that, where it's like, yeah, Dignitas has two teams. They have their Overwatch League team, and they have their, um, you know, their travel team or their 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 uh, their you know circuit team that goes and plays all these other tournaments. And their uh, the players might be interchangeable. Like maybe Links are, I was gonna say like breaks his wrist or something. Like <laughs> has some sort of esports related injury but you know maybe he's just not not up to snuff or i i don't know we, we we could definitely see that that'd be that'd be pretty um that'd be pretty cool um i do i do hope that a lot of these organizations do end up benefiting from overwatch league i would really hate if overwatch league like came in and monopolized everything i think it's going to in some aspects obviously um, but I, i'd hate to see overwatch league have a really negative impact on any aspect of overwatch esports because overwatch esports 
since the beginning has been such an organic uh and like community driven and like grassroots operation you know since the days of the gosu gamers weekly it's like when the first ones were going out and and gosu gamers really kind of uh as well as Maturino really kind of like promoting the the um, the scene before the scene even existed uh, at a grassroots level. I'd really hate to see Overwatch League come in and like stomp that out. <laughs> even though obviously yeah. I'm going to be in favor of Overwatch League almost regardless of anything. Yeah, I'd really hate to yeah, see them, like, stomp it out. We're we're a little obligated to just run with it, but it's oh, it's an interesting question, uh, definitely for sure. I think developmental league is you know really that those are the two options. So I don't see it being a problem majorly. Like yeah. the ones that are already really small may disappear completely um but the you know the the ngs the ones that have held Mm -hmm. good events so far uh will either still continue to draw teams that'll just play outside of league events or um you know they'll they'll move into a cover teams sort of thing Yeah. yeah um and speaking of uh really good events that had really good teams and then we saw another uh i think this is the first week of it, but it's definitely the first week we've covered it. It's the EFRAG TV Enter the Arena Overwatch Tournament. And keeping in line with Overwatch tournaments, it has a mouthful of a name. Um, but it's called Enter the Arena because I believe it's powered by the Razer Arena uh, tournament gameplay structure thing. I, I don't know, I actually exactly know what it is. But uh, that featured actually featured a lot of, um, you know, what we would probably call like tier two teams. Um, uh, But the top four alone speaks for itself. We saw uh, selfless hammers, renegades and gale force and the top four of that one with selfless beating out renegades three to one in the finals. Yeah. And selfless debuting. uh, I don't know if they're actually debuting it, but it's the first time I've really gotten an up close look at their new roster. Mm -hmm. Um, They have Michael three D they have Kresnik uh, Sinatra. I believe I'm I'm saying that right. Emong, uh, D. Fran, and there's one more I'm missing. Dak, maybe. That sounds right. Dak or Dak or legit RC. I can't remember which. Um, I think they're both associated with the. I think it's Dak. I think it's Dak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so they they really kind of brought this new roster, and we were really talking about you know the last time we've been talking about tournaments, how Hammers has won everything with yeah. these with these lesser teams around and then here comes selfless with a roster we're not very familiar with mm-hmm. and you know they're a name we're familiar with so they had credibility going yep. into it um not all the the players are unheard of michael 3d has been around emong's a name that's definitely familiar mm-hmm. uh, the other ones were a little bit lesser known uh, to me at least but um showed just i mean it was funny too in the finals. You really, like, I really thought they were gonna lose. They they lost the first map bad in the final, mm-hmm. um, and then they were able to come back and and take the next three immediately. And it really was like a completely different team. So uh, I think that speaks very highly of teams. Like if you can get absolutely dumpstered on a map and just <laughs> instantly rally against a, um, not a slouch of a team in Renegades. No, Ren- and Renegades was I. At least I didn't get to see the whole event. I, I kind of cherry picked what I what I watched as I was doing my climbing. It's really difficult to play comp while you're watching because it, <laughs> it you know when you hear a McCree dead yeah. eye, you react, yep. and yep. <laughs> sometimes it's on Twitch and sometimes it's on your game. <laughs> so I try not to do that outside quick play. Um, and yeah, so I didn't quite catch all of it, but I mean, Renegades was being very different. They had a, a one a attack that I saw that where they had their only tank was Winston hmm. and they were rolling um Widowmaker and Tracer and I can't remember who the third DPS Dive was. Cop? Uh probably Farah because it was Mangachu's team. Um hmm. yeah it was a it was a dive copy thing but there was like no Zarya to to shield the Winston oh. and it was a, a three DPS composition. And I know that that was more popular this weekend. Unfortunately, Winston's lab didn't have pick rates for us. I would have loved to have seen those, but uh, we should have those for the upcoming events over the next couple of days here. And I look forward to uh, seeing how things are adjusting, you know, Widowmaker, especially for me is one that for me is coming back in a big way. Mm-hmm. Um, the, 
kind of uh, the duo queue, like the the randoms you pick up when you're you're playing comp and mm-hmm. uh, platinum aren't quite used to it yet. Uh, they still like to <laughs> yell at people for picking the Widowmaker, yeah. but she's been really really strong, and I'm really excited about it. I'm happy to see some of the uh, the top tier teams start to pick her up as well and play yeah. with her. I've been very vocal about thinking that that watching the Widowmaker play has been some of the most fun. Um, you know, things to see as yeah. we've gone through the whole comp scene from the beginning. Yeah, I still remember the play from the Josh OG tournament, Gods <laughs> doing basically what's now called the Reddit Widowmaker with the uh the hook chain up, except it wasn't obviously it wasn't on a three V three map. It was on uh attack on Hollywood and just like uh hook shotting up, getting a snipe in the air. I think maybe even before he came down, getting another one and then moving over like into the, the alleyway or the, uh, the choke point and getting a third, like just completely opening up the attack on Hollywood, just like out of nowhere with a Widowmaker. Um, yeah. Widowmaker plays obviously like for, for, for pretty obvious reasons that are very like, uh, transferable from FPS game to FPS game, like some of the most exciting and skill intensive like plays to see. Yeah, also one of the most frustrating to happen to you. Yes, um, sir. Yes, but, sir. <laughs> but nonetheless, I mean, it's just, and we've seen it. I've seen it in uh, my, you know, in my my play lately, as well as the, what we've been able to watch. It's just you. I mean, you wait for that one pick, and then the whole team just floods into the point because you have the extra guy. And now, as Widowmaker, once you get that first pick, and the whole team dives, like you're not under any pressure anymore. Nobody has a half a second to even think about you, let alone you fire a gun at you. Like you just get True. to take free shots if if your team dives in off that pick. True. Um, and I kind of thought since they fixed her her quick scoping abilities, or you know, the the last kind of slight buff they gave her i really thought she was likely to come back in and i'm I'm glad to see it finally coming to fruition a little bit um and also i think it's really really good that we're we're seeing one tank now it's an overcorrection in my yeah. opinion like you still probably want two 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 but the fact that it's viable it speaks volumes and i think it's uh you know a really good thing going forward that that we'll get to see a lot more um diverse and and uh, dynamic picks and it'll be at least for a couple of weeks until things get settled again uh, yeah. you know it'll be pretty shaken up and we've got another ptr patch that we're going to talk about uh coming down the pipe with even more changes so yeah i definitely would like to see maybe uh, single tank not be top tier, but I'd like it to be like a rock, a paper, or a scissor, right? Like I want it to be one of the three, or at least like maybe like a half of one. Where like, okay, I can play it at least on this point, and it's going to be really good at this point, and then maybe we swap to get that second tank or whatever. Uh, or maybe in some points we swap to the third tank, although people are probably going to be crying about triple tank, obviously, just because of the, the stigma it had for so long. But yeah, no, I definitely would like to see that. Um, the single tank at least be an option um but moving right along we've got one more uh, tournament that we wanted to talk about uh, from this weekend uh this was the um tespa which is a uh collegiate esports uh organization Uh, they did their first really big overwatch tournament I, i believe there were some number of weeks of qualifiers and the teams played there were four regions north south east west and uh, these college teams played, uh, qualified, and then made it to the LAN um, finals, uh, at least the top four. Um, and in that top four, we saw um, Texas from the south, uh, Cal Berkeley from the west, Rutgers, uh, which is in New Jersey, from the east, and then what I would consider our team, University of Toronto in the north, um, I'm 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 taking Toronto. I love Toronto. Uh, <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> huh? You're Canadian though. I guess so. Uh, I will take that. Um, and uh, we saw Toronto and Berkeley in the finals, but sadly, uh, the Californians won three to zero in the finals. Um, yeah, definitely really cool to see. Uh, like we we've talked at length a number of times about how easy it is to root for a a college team. Like, Oh, 
I went to that college. I'm going to root for that team. It's so much easier for me to root for University of Toronto, which, by the way, I did not go to, but <laughs> is relatively close. Um, like within, it's within two hours away from us. Um, yeah, it was very easy for me to root for University of Toronto. It was, it was easier for me to u- root for University of Toronto in that finals than it would be for me to root for either Selfless or Hammers. Although I would probably root for Hammers because I like them better. But you understand what I'm saying. Like, if you see two random esports organizations in the finals that you've never heard of, who do you root for? Uh, I don't know. Whichever one has a cooler mascot, that that's usually <laughs> what I do. Um, or whichever one has, like, a cooler colored jersey. Um, or whoever is, like, sponsored by an NBA team. Like, those are, those are the things I, like, immediately default to. Um, and I think all of them end up being renegades at some point. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> for here, it was like, okay, boom, I'm rooting for Toronto. Screw the Californians. I want the University of Toronto to win. Sadly, that didn't happen, but, um, yeah, it, it's a really easy analog. It's really easy for muggles to also root for their alma mater uh, instead of, like, rooting for Veritas Pro or, you know, Dignitas. Like, that. Like people have no idea what that is, but it's very easy to root for. Uh, you know, you silly no bags. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But um, there actually were some really cool plays uh, from that event. There was a a play where on the second point of Dorado on attack, the Lucio wall rode up to the lead le, wall rode up to the top of the building, um, where the other team was. Um, the, the, the defending team had high ground. The Lucio wall road up to the front of the building on the ledge, like not where there's like a walkable place, like a ledge in front of the building, like barely on it. And then jumped up on top wall road across and booped down the Reinhardt from the, from the high ground. Uh, it was actually pretty sweet. Um, if I can find the link again, I will post the link in in the show notes but it was actually pretty cool uh there's some other pretty decent plays i mean it, these players were not pro players obviously they're college students um but the level of play was actually quite high uh, which was nice to see um and i really do hope that you know these types of tournaments keep happening uh i know tespa is doing this i know uh egf is doing this i know there's i think a couple of other organizations that are doing college uh college esports and you know this really helps the schools build up their esports clubs uh, and eventually we're going to start seeing these esports clubs have you know professional grade players or like professional ready grade players um and 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 we'll really start seeing some talent and what i think will be even cooler is kind of like uh in college football or college basketball you know we'll see like the beginnings of a new stars which i think is really cool it's like oh yeah i remember watching uh you know whichever player in college they were really good um and now they play for cloud nine or something like that i think that's you know that, that's a really cool prospect to think uh you know we can see the beginnings of the next generation of of esports professionals so but uh, yeah, that was basically uh, that was pretty much everything. Actually, a pretty decently uh, stacked weekend in terms of, of good teams playing and a nice little uh, a nice little look a preview ahead to the future of uh, you know a number of good tournaments coming up too. But let us move right along and oh, let's break it down. Yeah! Yes, let's break it down. We've got uh, I've got some some bullet point team changes and some roster changes that happened over the past couple of weeks, and then we're going to talk about the patch notes a bit. So um, we saw Kungarna go from what Ghost Esports for like a day or half a day or like five hours or something, uh, drop Ghost and then get picked up by Splice, who notably. Uh, made a strategic partnership with Delaware North, which is headquarters in Buffalo. Um, Splice, which is headquarters in Rochester. Um, but I actually have nothing to do with either of them now. Are now going to be a Boston-based team uh, with the Bruins in yeah. Delaware North. <laughs> Dead to death, but now my new favorite team. Um, I No, you, don't, you won't start liking them until they win the championship. Uh, 
True. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I already ordered my jersey. Uh, they also have a really cool logo. That's an awesome like snake logo. So I already ordered my jersey. Um, they're also, I believe, partnered with Meta Threads, um, which it, they're, they're, their jerseys are really comfortable. So I, I would not feel bad owning any Meta Threads jersey of any esports team, really. So uh, just in case people were looking to buy me birthday presents, even though my birthday's not for a long time. Um, but <laughs> back to the bullet points. Uh, we saw Rogue uh, relocate to Vegas. I know the organization itself was based out of Vegas, but now the team is going to be in Vegas, which is kind of cool. I wish I was relocating to Vegas. Uh, <laughs> uh, we saw Reunited rebrand themselves as E-United. And then promptly moved to the United States. Yeah, and then moved to the U.S. <laughs> uh, the only thing I have to say about that name and that whole thing is EU in 2017. La la. Um, <laughs> I both love and hate the name because it's, I don't know, it works. Like it, it brands themselves as like the EU team, which they they were for like 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, and like, <laughs> but I don't know, just the whole thing about it. It's, I mean, there was reunited, then there was we united, and then reunited disappeared, then they came back again, and then now they're e united, and like, if they keep changing, but at the same time, nothing has changed at all. Yeah, um, they're still reu crited or reu salted in my mind. Yeah, reu salted. Um, yeah, I finish better than second place. Um, <laughs> I mean, I still like. <laughs> The, I still hearken back to that time they complained about the uh, the rules of the tournament that were very clearly laid out and were right like in rounds in perfectly. round six <laughs> yeah that were enforced with no question the first eighteen rounds of the tournament but then when they lost to it they uh, yeah I think that was hero stacking wasn't it I think that was double that was um, that was Zengi Camp yeah Zengi. I think it was Lord. yeah. Uh, so, so the, I mean, they had a point, but at the same time, like sure. you're in the middle of a tournament, yeah. stop. They made that point like, way too late. Right, like let let the fans watch the game now, please. Yeah, they're like, um, uh, yeah, this cake tastes really awful. I want a refund. It's like, sir, this is your fourth slice. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. Um, so, so when you hear us pick on pick on reunited, that's why it's nothing to do with the team or how they play or anything yeah, like that. And, we, and just, really, we just like to pick on them because that ground our gears on, uh, only a million the years ago. Most OG of Overwatch esports fans will no, have any idea what we're talking about. This was like probably Gosu Gamers Weekly, like under ten. I'm guessing. <laughs> What's that? Like four. Or something. Yeah, it was. It was definitely like one of the earlier ones. So we're we're really showing our age here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with that, but let's move right along. Uh, Man of Snow. I don't even know if this is still going on at this point, but he wanted to start like an amateur team or something. And uh, I tweeted at him saying, "Hey, High Noon Podcast might have two guys that could join your amateur <laughs> team. <laughs> uh, that would be kind of cool." Um, <laughs> but really, nothing to talk about in that anymore. Um, there's been like a whole lot of drama with Man of Snow. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what to think about it. Um, Maybe we'll have him on the show at some point. He can explain himself. Um, but uh, actually, really, uh, I think kind of noteworthy thing that happened. Um, we'll, we'll round out the segment uh, at least from for these bullet points here. Uh, IDDQD is now with NRG. Um, probably one of the bigger um, team like free agent signings um, that we've ever seen. I think actually, I don't. I, I can't think of a. Um, really like a Pluppy. one person. What's that? Pluppy. Yeah, but Pluppy was always like he basically like started his own team with with Rogue, and then like they moved. And he like Misfits. filled in for different teams every event for like a month. That's true. Or Pluppy or was on like my dong for quite some time. That's true. He yes, did spend a still time. got there. He did spend some time on my dong. Um, um, yeah, obviously. I mean, you just <laughs> you look at this NRG roster and it. It's shaping up to be really great, but yeah. so far their strategy seems to be echoing the the meme of the week, and that's you can't disappoint your fans if you don't join an event because um, <laughs> we have not seen them participate oh, in, in a little while now. And you know, the one thing I've noticed is that I don't see a ton of Seagull streaming, and we've talked in the past about how he had this challenge of like he he was he did it, he was there, he was the 
top Overwatch streamer. Everybody loved him for his streams, and yeah. um, but it wasn't really what he wanted to be doing. And so he kind of had this really awkward good. balance of, well, I, I need to do enough hours to keep my stream audience happy, but I also need to be scrimming and doing things off stream that you know people can, that that can't be seen in public as right. they're working on team comps and things um so we'll have to wait and see exactly when they they get into an event here um and, and when they st- they start participating but um a, a big name signing obviously if you don't think IDDQD is a very good player then you haven't seen him play very much um, just don't same think thing goes for Siegel Right, and but I, and, uh, and to be clear, I'm not saying IDDQD is aimbotting. I'm saying that watching him play looks <laughs> as though he's a human aimbot. Yes, yeah, he's he's just when that he good. Ults a 76. It literally just looks the same. It provides him <laughs> no. It actually makes it worse because he can't headshot anymore. He doesn't. He he specifically doesn't alt with 76. It's worse for him. Unless he just needs to like tear down shields because he reloads yeah. faster then. That's true. Um, but anyways, you know, it's it's one of those things where they've been a regular disappointment uh, <laughs> for That's what so they're. True. It is, and it's not. It's nothing against them. I think I can only remember them winning like one event, um, and it, that goes back to the mix-up days. Yeah, and, and they've, you know, they were. Ago. They've been in the top tier of teams, but they've never really been able to kind of close it out. And I know that's what this signing is looking to do. And that's obviously the goal of the team is is to to get back into that top tier and compete with the best and, and beat them. Um, and it's a step in the right direction. But I, it's just fool me once, shame on you or shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Backwards, got that wrong. Um, but anyway, I need to see them participate and i need to see how they stack up against these teams before i get too hyped i mean it's got potential to be the highest value signing out there but until we know what their full roster is going to look like and until we see how they function as a unit it's i'm just kind of shrugging at this one i do think it's funny um i mean iddqd like slow rolled this signing for so long like i feel like it was like four months ago he was like yeah you just wait and see yeah it's gonna be super exciting um, and I almost feel like whatever he was talking about at that time didn't happen. And then now we're on this one and it's still pretty big. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, it's just like, they're not the Cleveland Browns, but they're the closest analog to the Cleveland Browns I can think of. And just that they, they always seem to just not be what their fans have hoped for. And, mm-hmm. and you know, it's, I don't know, you gotta, you gotta put up the results to get me super excited at this point energy. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. Um, you know, Looking just on paper, you'd think that you know the Misfits roster with with the the the, the new Misfits roster would have just been amazing. Like they ta- they should be able to take on Envy and 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 you know win everything. But really, you know, it just it was never the same uh, as as the old Rogue roster for for whatever reason. It just didn't click the same. So, a hundred percent. You know, we've talked ad nauseum uh, on previous episodes about how. The uh, pl- uh, raw player skill is definitely important, but it's not as important as team chemistry and communication and all these other uh, almost intangibles uh, in Overwatch. So uh, I-, I would still, you know, I'd rather have the old, you know, Cloud9, Double Winston, like working seamlessly as one moving giant Winston than two really good players that don't work well together. Um, so uh, we'll see. I mean, that, and that's what, that's really what we good. need to see from them. So exactly. And you know, IDDQD really good. Seagull really good. I mean, a lot of the players like on paper, like if you just tallied up the like skill rate, like the raw skill rating of the players on the NRG teams, probably in the top five, definitely top 10 in terms of raw player skill, uh, for teams out there. But, they just couldn't put it up. So I'm, I'm hoping that the addition of IDDQD will not only add some player points or player skill points to the team, but will also, you know, give the team the morale and the, and, and the drive to really perform. Cause like, if you have a top tier player uh, on your team, it makes you want to perform uh, and, and live up to that. Right. I, I at least I think so. Uh, and NRG, obviously one of the more, uh, funded teams, um, uh, with, with the, 
uh, Andy Miller from the Sacramento Kings, I think, uh, part owner of Sacramento Kings and that whole VC behind them. Um, hopefully they've got the, the resources to really get them, uh, to train and to, to be on the right track. So hopefully, um, so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm definitely uh, looking forward to seeing that. Uh, the one other thing I wanted to, um, the, the one other thing I wanted to talk about with uh, NRG uh, was that there was actually an article today that talked about uh, a number of uh, professional uh, sports teams as well as city mayors uh, reaching out to NRG to try to get them to come to their city for Overwatch League. So, um, you know, take that for what it's worth, but I feel like, uh, the wheels are kind of turning a little bit for Overwatch League. Hopefully we're going to hear something about it, at least something soon. Maybe. I want to make a promise that at least I'm going to stop talking about it until they give us something because, uh, I mean, I'm not, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. It really is. It really is. Um, but yeah, I definitely, um, yeah, I mean, it, it is interesting. Um, it also makes me think that maybe we should talk to the mayor of Buffalo to try to get a team to come to Buffalo. Um, I think I probably, I actually could probably get a meeting with the mayor to, to set that up. Maybe I will. Who knows? Um, but yeah, it, it's definitely interesting. Like we've we've got uh, we've got some teams staking some some claims, and I have to imagine that there's going to be a lot of uh, fought a lot of fights over the real estate in California, um, and there's probably not going to be that many fights in Buffalo, folks. So head on over, bring your Overwatch League team to Buffalo. We've got state of the art facilities, the Key Bank Center. We've got the Pagulas. Uh, we've got cold chicken wings allentown come not on not cold chicken wings no, no, not got cold, chicken cold wings. weather comma, cold weather, comma chicken wings. hot chicken wings <laughs> yes uh craft beer hipsters the likes and the, uh, me we've got everything you covered hipsters yeah <laughs> 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 I'm putting the glasses on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely, uh, it's interesting to see if that at least at the team level uh, or the organization level, some things are at least being talked about, which is kind of nice, even if it's not official from Blizzard. Uh, we also got the um, impression from Devin when we talked to him that the organizations know more than we do. Um, oh, yeah. Which makes sense because they're financial well-being being is tied to that but uh so that's at least kind of exciting i guess uh in in the sense that like we know there's something there we just don't know what it is and we'll probably never know what it is because you know it's overwatch well, it wouldn't be the overwatch community if we weren't tirelessly waiting for something pretty much but uh if something wasn't overhyped a little too soon and then we're left with nothing for, <laughs> for three months yeah, and if there wasn't like a you know three month search for uh, Sombra or whatever, but oh, and another little throwaway thing, uh, Jeff Kaplan alluded that the next hero to be released mm. is not who you think it is, and everybody seems to think it's Doomfist. Yeah. So, rip Doomfist. That's rip. probably not going to happen right away. Rip. Yeah. Hmm. Who Coming knows? off three tank meta, we don't need another tank right now. As right. much as the game does need another tank before too long. Um, some diversity there would be would be great. Uh, it's just right after three tank, it, it needs to, to take. I more. just want them to come out with a hero that affects speed in some way, so that we can see less Lucio. Even though I love Lucio, yeah, like let a DPS do something with speed, yeah. even if it's not as good or shorter duration or mm -hmm. something. Any amount or you know faster for a shorter duration, mm -hmm. so you can even catch up to the people speed boosting away with yeah. Lucio. Like that would be really cool. Yeah. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I don't know how much, how much Papa Kaplan's listening to the show, but um, hopefully they've, they have de <laughs> detected that that's probably why he's uh, such a mainstay. Cause that definitely doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Despite the shifts in the meta, um, it's yeah. not blowing up the support scene very much. Like we're getting a little less Anna, a little more Zenyatta. That's about it. 
still like consistent Lucio, which is weird because when you think of like, okay, who's the like the most iconic hero in Overwatch? Who's the most powerful? Who's like the coolest? Who's got the most awesome abilities? None of those answers are Lucio. <laughs> Right. Yet the most played hero by a wide margin for a very long time, I think since the beginning of Overwatch, is Lucio. But uh, yeah. we've we've talked tirelessly about that over the years. So let us move right along to Soldier says, and got a quick one that we already kind of talked about. But uh, well, here goes. If you're gonna rebrand your team, brain some brainstorm some new name ideas. <laughs> e United, really? <laughs> like, <come on. laughs> um, we United, yeah, it's United, it's still such United. it's still such a weird one. Um, as much as I love it, like I love the logo. I loved they had like an animation when they announced it. It was it was really cool. Like, but for all intents and purposes, it was it was a lot of fun. But it's just it's just so. I don't know. It almost comes across lazy. I don't want to say it's lazy, but it just almost comes across. I do across want to say it's lazy because it almost certainly is. Like, oh, well, we're doing it uh, for branding reasons. No, you're not. You're not. You're, you're not selling anything. I don't think. <laughs> so then, it doesn't matter. What? Whatever. Um, we're just trying to poke some fun anyway. But yeah. Um, one last thing uh, before we wrap up the show, I did want to talk. Um, there was a basically a glorified rumor. Um, from the Overwatch official forums where someone mentioned the possibility at the thought of maybe allowing or having some form of skin trading uh, or item trading in Overwatch. I mean, that would be awesome to see, but I just don't think it's going to happen. I mean, we've had Hearthstone for so long, and they've never once got even gotten close to doing anything like that at all. Like, that's the one thing in Hearthstone that's literally never been touched. It's it's always been the dust system, and the that format has not changed one bit since Alpha. So... I don't know, it'd be cool. Like, I definitely want the ability to get rid of my... Um, you know, my like green May skin, my common green May skin that I'm literally never going to use, um, or basically any of my common Overwatch skins. Like once you have the legendary, why would I use the common ever? Unless you really liked the color, like garbage yellow, like, <laughs> you know, I've had teammates do it to trigger us. Cause we're, cause they get play of the game a lot. Cause you know, like your DPS characters. Mm-hmm. So they use like, just the most potato skin possible with no heroic <laughs> intro just to make us look at it every single game. So we yell at him, but that's usually just for, just for grins. <laughs> yeah. I have like the more, the more like events that they're doing and the more they're doing with skins, ironically, the more I'm like becoming like less, I care less about skins. Um, yeah. Like for the year, of the rooster event, I got one legendary, and I think I'm okay with that. Like I liked the other skins. Like I liked the Roadhog. I liked the Winston. But like they're not that much better than the ones I'm using. And I can only use one skin at a time. Having them doesn't really do me any good. So like, why? Yeah. Um, they. They. I've. I've gone on rants about uh, what they should do with the skins. Um, and basically, it's just copy Dota 2, which does everything right in basically every way. <laughs> Um, but enough about that. Um, I think that's uh, that's gonna be it. Do we have any any last minute uh, stuff we wanna wanna throw it out there? No, it looks like Immortals has taken the first point off of complexity here. But other than that, uh, Carbon Masters is just getting started, so nice. nothing really to add. So we are going to leave it out on that, so we can go watch that and uh, all that stuff. Um, yeah, so. Huge thanks to uh, Matt Chirino and Adam Hullock for all the stuff that they do, like make us songs and be sponsors for us in the first season. Uh, you can always check us out, guys, at highnoonpodcast.com. All of our links are there. We're also on Twitter at High Noon Podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, SoundCloud. Guys, please, if you want to support the show, please leave us a review on iTunes. You can also support the show over at patreon.com slash highnoonpodcast. Uh, one note about that is that we have very recently uh, become like super um, conversationy in the, in the uh, uh, in the Discord. Like 
we we always have like at least one or two conversations a week, but now it's like basically nonstop all day. We're like talking about something, and it's not garbage. It's relevant, like tournament stuff. So if that's the type of conversation you want to be hearing, uh, we definitely have that um, over at patreon.com slash high podcast. Um, but yeah, death, where can, uh, where can people find you? Well, you just listed all the, all the social media outlets. So I'm, it's pretty much at high noon podcast.com. There's a, an authors or a, a host page. You can get all our links on there. Yes. You can also get my links there too. So for death blow, I'm the Blevins and guys remember, please, even though it's been an extra week, it's high noon. Got his boots and he put on his hat Threw the coin away that same day It's in his past and he's not looking back He says, finding mine now guides my way He's not good, but he sure ain't bad He'll make amends for the sins that he has He says, I'll change the world one bullet at a time Till I find mine Official call out someone from Hammers Esports. Come on the show and do an interview. Okay, bye.